Hello, YouTubers. This is Johnny. Welcome to Nasdaq channel. Today, I'm gonna introduce in a hot pot teapot lease and show you how to install teapot on your home network or in your home lab environment. Um, I did teapot installation one year ago, one or two years ago, and uh, that was released on 16.04. Now it's been two years, so I think probably it's best to record it and show the new uh, design, new features of this uh, honeypot. So right now version is 19, um, and hope you will enjoy this video. Give me a thumb up and subscribe. Okay, let's start it. Uh, let's start with downloading teapot. So I search by teapot honeypot installation. The first videos, it's my video recorded a long time ago, 16. It's uh, actually it's one year ago, not that long, 16.04. Um, now they have new version, so it's a 19.03. Um, okay, just been released. Let's take a look. So basically, teapot using Docker technologies. Um, there's a bunch of uh, containers behind this release. Uh, it will be very interesting. The only thing we need care about that is installation. Um, so the system requirement it's um, at least has six to eight gig RAM compared to one year ago only four gig RAM. Now it's need a um, one twenty eight gigabyte free disk space. Wow! Uh, downloading teapot from GitHub. Okay. So nineteen point zero three. It's a teapot ISO file. It's just basically installation file. We can download it. And give it a try. It's only like 42 megabytes I'm sensing. Uh, it's just an installation file and they were downloading uh, the all files from the internet. So that's why they require the internet connection, which is the requirement for this installation. Okay, ISO file teapot.iso has been downloaded. Now I'm gonna log into my VMware vSphere ISXI host and create a new VM for it with uh, I would say 8 gig RAM, 100 gig hard drive to make it uh, working properly. I'm gonna create a new virtual machine um, using a typical configuration. Name is a teapot 19.3. Choose a local IT data storage using a Linux. Find out the Ubuntu release should be 64 bit. Next, no, just one should be enough. Choosing the external connection. Okay, like, um, hmm, um, 100 gig. Next, gonna add it to the virtual machine settings before I start it. Uh, most likely, I will need a uh, gram. No, not. I think it's enough here. And the CPU, I'm gonna get to two. Video cards, CD, we don't need it. Of P drive and um, now that looks good right now. Finish it. Okay, so it's here. How long? Um, let's open the console from here. CD DVD drive connect to me now. We cannot connect to the ISO image on a local drive, which we just downloaded. Depart. And we're gonna reset it again, send the control to delete, 
command. Perfect. Ah, it's a 19.0.3. Based on Debian. It's gonna take a lot of time for uh, this VM to set it up. So I'm gonna go through um, basic installation process and then when it's configuring, downloading, I'm gonna just uh, turn off the video and disable the recording. And when it's done, I'm gonna come back and record it again. So I don't have proxy. So let's go on up how it gonna work here. Um, let's do continue. Done on in this, these files. Uh, loading additional components. This is still the installation uh, preparing process. So it's gonna prepare in the VN to downloading the real uh, containers uh, starting uh, VM virtual machine internally so it's gonna take a quite a bit long time to complete the installation um, we will reach that point, I will tell you, and then we are going to stop recording and then you can go back to um, take enjoy your life for three hours and then come back and you should be able to get it finished. I assume in the three hours should be enough. It's still creating a ext4 file system. Okay, now retrieving the packages. It's a validating packages, resolving the dependencies. Um, basically, I think it's just updating the OS. I was seeing apt get command there. Um, I'm guessing it's retrieving some updates using the apt get. Um, so now it's a six percentage installed in the base system. Um, I'm gonna stop here. I will come back once it's done. Um, after the installing installer retrieved all packages, now it's stop at this system, this this web page, this this menu. So it's asking what kind of uh, addition you want to install, what kind of uh, um, mode you want to go to. You want to go standard mode, sensor mode, industrial mode, or collector mode, or next generation mode. Uh, I would say, um, so for each mode, you, you probably have different uh, requirements. Um, so standard will be 6 gig RAM and 128 gig SSD. Oh, I only use the 80 gig, so I hope it will be enough. But then let's give it a try. So we need to put the password here. Um, hopefully, username. Um, usually I use my name. Update information. It's gonna take uh, quite a bit of time. Um, I'm gonna stop the video here. Um, you can see like, all kind of messages rolling through the console screen. So it's gonna take uh, quite a bit long time. Uh, no point to just record in message you should be able to get this get this step um, 
follow the steps I did. Okay, now we finished the installation. Uh, Teapot 19.03 has completely finished the installation. We got IP 192.168.2.119 and external IP 38.121.86.130. So first thing I think um, we need to do is uh, configure our home router to make sure uh, you can map an AT map it out so it can be um, accessible from internet. So what I'm using is a ZTE router. I logged in and the configure firewall set up DMZ. Um, the LAN, basically I'm mapping my public IP 38.121.86.130 to this 192.168.2.119 So once you did that, apply it Now you should be able to get some events from internet Somebody stay in the internet can, constantly scan your network and they will find out that some, your, your, this honeypot teapot is opening to the world and they were trying to hack you, trying to attack you. So let's go there, take a look what's happening. 192.168.2.119 uh, We may want to check out 64294 which is a system port Admin web page. I'm gonna show you this um, how your system looks like. So I got the four CPU cores. It's running on a VMware platform, and this Debian Linux I, Linux OS, and the latest is host name, system time, and you will see how much CPU has been used, memory usage disk I.O. and network traffic. We also can get the system logs, storage, reading, writing information, network information. And for Docker, the uh, TSEC user doesn't have the privilege to read those informations. Your accounts, service, applications, and any updates. Basically, there's not much information providing here. You do able to get uh, your system status here, but you won't be able to control it. I even don't see any rebooting, stop the service, restarting service, and I even cannot see the Docker information here. So here is terminal. You can run some commands from here. That's good, but it's running under the TSAC command. I even cannot get the authentication to get the system update. The application, there's a storage application, and here is a service. The system services. Anyway, this his is providing the basic information, but what we I'm gonna show is not that not at the main page. It actually is web we interface for T for the system. So I have been logged in before, so I'm gonna sh try to loading this page to you. Start loading. You also can log in from here using TSAC command. Unfortunately, loot command is not enabled. Doesn't work. We didn't set up a loot password, and there is always TSAC used as a login username. Let's see. Loot account. Yeah, there's no permission to change this account. Let's check 
call it um, the interface here. Okay, here you are. So we want to take a look at a teapot dashboard, a default dashboard for last 15 minutes. We've been getting some logs. Here you can choose the timing from, let's say, 17 to now. Okay, let's go. The system has been up for like uh, 20 minutes. So far, I still didn't get too much attack yet, but I do see some Linux logs, Windows NT logs here. Um, you can see the detail logging information here. Remote user. And where it's from. 2.4 those almost looks like all my internal access and you can check here no result found yet dashboard timeline It shows how many logs we've got for the last 15 minutes. And this map shows uh, where your attack coming from. Monitoring is off, you can enable it. So, this is basic information, basic web we um, the system has been installed, you just need more time to get more logs, and then you can drill down to see what's happening from the internet. Thank you for watching, that's all.